I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God gave his word so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The scriptures testify about Jesus who lived a perfect life for you, died on the cross to pay for all your sins, and rose again to assure you of your salvation. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grant us, Lord, the spirit to think and do what is right, that we who cannot do anything that is good without you may by your help be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. Our first lesson from God's Word for this morning comes from the Old Testament book of Genesis, chapter 18, verses 1 through 14. Here in this lesson, the Lord appears to Abraham and promises him a son, while his wife Sarah laughs, and most of the world would have laughed with them. You see, Abraham is about 100 years old at this point. Sarah is about 90 years old. They were well past the age of childbearing. Sarah, throughout all the rest of her life, had been barren. She was not able to have children. And so they thought this must have been impossible and totally crazy to even think about. But this lesson teaches us that even when God's promises seem impossible, we listen and we believe because nothing is too hard for the Lord. And just as the Lord made good on his promises here to Abraham, and he did have a son, so also he will surely make good on his even greater promises to us, promises of forgiveness and life and salvation. The Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre while he was still sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground. He said, If I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. Let a little water be brought, and then you may all wash your feet and rest under this tree. Let me get you something to eat so that you can be refreshed and then go on your way, now that you have come to your servant. Very well, they answered. Do as you say. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three seahs of fine flour and knead it and bake some bread. Then he ran to the herd and selected a choice tender calf and gave it to the servant who hurried to prepare it. 
He then brought some curds and milk and the calf that had been prepared and set these before them. While they ate, he stood near them under a tree. Where is your wife, Sarah? They asked him. There in the tent, he said. Then the Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent, which was behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already old and well advanced in years, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, After I am worn out and my master is old, will I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Will I really have a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year and Sarah will have a son. This is the word of our Lord. Our psalm of the day is Psalm number 119a. You can find it printed on pages 6 and 7 in your service folder. Let's sing the psalm together. second lesson from God's Word for this morning comes from the New Testament book of Colossians chapter 1 verses 21 through 29. Paul says here that we listen when God speaks. We listen to God's Word in all its fullness because it has a gospel message to tell us that we cannot miss. It has a gospel message to share with us that we have been reconciled to him through faith in Jesus Christ. And that brings us hope and joy for our lives right now, and especially as we look toward an eternity in heaven. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation, If you continue in your faith, established and firm, not moved from the hope held out in the gospel. This is the gospel that you heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven, and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. Now I rejoice in what was suffered for you, and I fill up in my flesh what is still lacking in regard to Christ's afflictions, for the sake of his body, which is the church. I have become its servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness, the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the saints. 
To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. We proclaim him, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom, so that we may present everyone perfect in Christ. To this end I labor, struggling with all his energy, which so powerfully works in me. This is the word of our Lord. Our verse of the day then comes from the Old Testament book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 11, which reminds us that we listen when God speaks because his word has power and purpose in our lives to bring us to faith and to save us for heaven. Alleluia. My word will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Alleluia. respect for the words and works of our Lord, please stand for the gospel lesson. Today's gospel comes from Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. This is the gospel of our Lord. Congregation may be seated. I invite the children forward for the children's service. Morning, everybody. I have here a box of delicious food. Food that is very, very good for you. You see everything that's in there? I picked this box up off of the back library table. It's full of all kinds of vegetables that you guys might eat here. Some peppers. These look like some cucumbers, maybe. This is a squash. Good stuff, right? At least good for you. You might not like vegetables all that much. But it's good for you, right? Makes you healthy. You see anything in there that you think you would have a hard time eating? What about that thing? Why do you think this is in a box of good food, food that is really good for you? You'd have a hard time eating that, huh? It's a little too chewy, a little too chewy. It's high in fiber, but you have a hard time getting it down, right? This isn't exactly a food like the rest of those things, but this is kind of the picture that Jesus is telling us in our gospel lesson for today. You remember that Jesus and his disciples went to Mary and Martha's house, and Martha wanted to make Jesus this big, awesome meal with all this good food that would have been so delicious. But Jesus wanted to give Mary and Martha something, too. Mary and Martha weren't the only ones who were supposed to be giving a meal. Jesus wanted to give a meal, too, only the food that he had to give to Mary and Martha. It wasn't the kind of food like this that went through your mouth and into your stomach. The food that Jesus had to give, it was a spiritual food. It was his word that goes in through your ears and down into your heart. And this was better. Because see, when you eat this kind of stuff, you get hungry again. A few hours later, you get hungry again. You have this for lunch, you're going to be hungry again by supper time. But when you have this, when Jesus gives you this kind of food, this is the kind of food that's going to make you 
that's going to make you live for eternity. This is the kind of food that you're never going to get hungry again because this is the kind of food that makes you come to heaven. And when we go to heaven, everything's going to be perfect. And when we look forward to being in heaven, all we have is joy. And when we look forward to being in heaven, we don't need anything else. Jesus said this is the one thing needed. More than anything in your life, remember that this is the one thing you need, even more than food, even more than water, even more than air, because this is the one thing that means we're going to be in heaven one day. When we believe Jesus' word, when we eat Jesus' word, when we eat the meal that he feeds us, when we come to God's house here at church, then this means we're going to live with him forever in heaven. And this is the best thing that we can ever have. How about we fold our hands and bow our heads and let's say a prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for giving us this great meal, this spiritual meal uh, in your word. Thank you for promising us that you've forgiven our sins. Thank you for promising us that we have a place with you in heaven. Thank you for giving us every good thing in this world. We ask you to keep us uh, keep us in faith and keep us close to you and keep us on the road to heaven just as you want us to be. Finally, bring us home to heaven to be with you. And until then, help us love each other and love all the people around us so that we can give you glory. In your name we pray, amen. Thanks, everybody. Head back to your seats. Let's continue our service then with our hymn of the day. It's hymn number 290, One Thing's Needful. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Amen, dear brothers and sisters. What a feast it must have been that was served that day at the home of Mary and Martha. Jesus and his disciples were coming to town, which meant that Martha had to prepare this banquet for no less than 15 people at least. And just imagine having to throw together appetizers and salads and rolls and meats and condiments and fruits and vegetables and desserts and maybe other sides along with and on top of all of that needing to clean and needing to get the table set and needing to get all those guests carefully arranged and seated yes this might must have been quite an affair must have been a great banquet for sure but a feast for the ages well that's not what happened in the dining room that day That took place as Martha's sister Mary sat at Jesus' feet, listening and marveling at the words of life that came from his lips. And that day, Jesus taught Mary and Martha, and he's teaching us too on this day, an important lesson, that the best food, well, it's not physical. It's spiritual, because that lasts to eternity. And it doesn't come when we serve Jesus. It comes when Jesus serves us. But you know, it really is not very hard for us to find sympathy for Martha here, is it? I mean, she got steamed because she had so much to do in so little time, and it seemed like her sister Mary just sat there. I mean, how well-tempered would you be if you were pressed for time and you had all of these different things to do and, and nobody was willing to lift a finger to help you to get ready for one of your big holiday meals, Thanksgiving or Christmas or Easter or whatever else it may be? No, it's really pretty easy for us to understand where Mary was coming from when she let her frustrations boil over at Jesus and Mary. Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. So then why is it Martha who gets chided here? Well, it's because even though we can understand her frustrations, it still didn't make it right. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Martha had gotten all out of sorts here. And so her Savior had to gently and lovingly bring her back into focus. You see, what Martha was doing, it would have been great for any other big shot dinner guest she might have ever entertained at any other time. But as warm and as extravagant as this welcome was, it wasn't the kind of welcome that Jesus wanted. He came to this earth to serve rather than to be served, remember? Well, Martha didn't. She got caught up in trying to make sure that Jesus and his disciples were comfortable and well taken care of, which in itself is, of course, absolutely noble, but... In this case, she forgot the real reason that Jesus had come. Martha thought that Jesus was her dinner guest, when in fact Jesus first wanted her to be the guest and himself to be the host. And that's because he was not serving literal food that went in her stomach. He was serving spiritual food that went in her heart. This was a feast for the ages. And that was so much more valuable than anything Martha had to offer that day. And Mary, she really got that. Jesus points that out here. She knew that when Jesus came to town, their priorities changed. Jesus was not interested in just getting a really nice wine and dine from them. Their purpose in inviting Jesus into their home was to sit at his feet and be fed with his life-giving word. And so when Jesus arrived, Mary rightly put all the rest of those preparations on the back burner. And who could ever really, truly, properly blame her? Because there has never in the history of this world been a greater meal served. Jesus, 
He brings his people course after course of the richest fare, free of charge, without limit, without expiration. Brother, your sins are forgiven and washed away in my blood. Sister, I went to the cross for you because that's how much I love you. Son, I'm in heaven right now preparing my mansions for you. And daughter, I will never abandon you. Just know that even right now, I am watching over you, and one day, I will bring you to be with me. That spiritual food that Jesus serves to his people, it makes even something like filet mignon look like chopped liver in comparison, because this, it doesn't just fill you, it fulfills you. And it doesn't just quiet your stomach's grumblings for a few hours. No, it satisfies your spiritual hunger for eternity. How blessed we are that our Lord Jesus sets for us a feast for the ages every week when we come here to his house and gather around his word and sacraments. No, God's word and sacraments, they might might not seem like much to the naked eye, but for sinners like us, God's means of grace, His simple means of grace are the best meal that we could ever have because with them comes God's greatest gifts of forgiveness and new life and eternal salvation. So friends, let's remember that this is a feast for the ages that we do not want to miss. We have so many opportunities in any given week to be fed by Jesus. We have multiple weekly worship opportunities. We have Sunday and Wednesday morning Bible studies. We have our radio and TV and internet broadcasts. We have resources in print and online that we can use. And, And maybe more than anything else, we have opportunities at home throughout the week for our own personal and family devotions. And here's why we should take advantage of those things. It's because when we are fed by Jesus, it gives us a clear conscience and hope for eternal life. It gives us a close-knit, caring fellowship with all the rest of these people that we share these pews with. And it gives us the energy and the motivation we need to do the Lord's work in whatever ways He's asked of us. And that last part there is important here. Because... That keeps our Christian lives in the proper perspective, just like Mary had. First, Jesus serves us. Then, we serve Jesus. First and foremost, we need to be fed by Jesus. And only then can we serve him in faith and thankfulness as he wants to be served. And again, That's what Martha found out when Jesus came to visit that day. She prepared this amazing feast for him and his disciples, and I'm sure it was a remarkable thing. I'm sure everything was top-notch. But I'm guessing that if given the choice between that amazing banquet and something, a meal that was more quick and easy... Jesus would surely have chosen that simpler meal if it meant that he had more time to feed Mary and Martha's souls. And that's important for us to remember. Jesus doesn't, Jesus doesn't just want our service and our work in and of itself. He doesn't just want our outward obedience. No, Jesus wants you. He wants your heart, your trust, your devotion, now and always. Jesus wants to serve you first. And only then does he want your heart to overflow in service to him and others in return. And that's why he said to Martha here, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, And it will not be taken away from her. Martha had it wrong here, Jesus said. But Mary had it right. Mary had the kind of balance in her life that Jesus looks for in his people. 
You know, the original Greek here, it actually makes it seem like Mary had been doing her part beforehand to get ready for this group's arrival, but then when Jesus arrived, she shifted her focus to him. Martha was angry with Mary because she wasn't helping, so she said, but actually Mary helped when she was supposed to. And then when the time came, she kept that number one most needful thing, God's Word, in its rightful place, number one in her heart and life. And that's where we need to keep it too today, friends. And that's the lesson that Jesus is trying to teach us. When we have an opportunity to be fed by Jesus, let's take it and let's respect it and let's value it above all else because there is no better or more important way for us to spend our time. Now, nobody's saying that you can't play baseball or or dance or take vacations on the weekends. But what we are saying is that just like Mary, no matter what we're doing or where we're going, let's make sure we are taking that time to prioritize feeding our faith and being served by Jesus. And that's because life in this sinful world is so tough sometimes and we need Jesus to get us through. Our God's Word for us, it guides us through those confusing and frustrating times when your life gets out of focus and seems like everything is turned upside down. And it helps us get through those trying times when you're fighting through tears and you don't even even know how to say anything but why. In those times in our lives, the Word of our Savior calls us back to Himself. And it renews us with the assurance of full forgiveness and free salvation. And it revitalizes us for service in God's kingdom. So as we sit here in God's house, and as He feeds us here with His Word, how can we serve Him going out from here? Well, let's learn the lesson that Jesus taught to Martha. Brothers and sisters, service and work and activities, those are wonderful things, wonderful gifts from God that we have them in our lives. But if those things get in the way of worship and Bible study, well then that's like passing up a feast for the ages, a Christmas or Thanksgiving dinner, so that you can instead make a quick trip through the drive through Now let's remember that old saying, if you're too busy for Jesus, you're just plain too busy. Jesus loves to see our willingness to serve him, but he wants us to serve him in the way that Mary did, with a right heart and straight priorities. We need to be served by him first, and only then can we serve him in the way that he wants So as we think about our lives and our service to our Savior, let's keep that one thing needful, the Word of God, first and most of all, let's keep that in our focus because that's going to bring everything else into line in our lives. Let's keep our eyes fixed on the Gospel of Jesus Christ, our our Savior slain for us and for this world we're trying to reach. Because when we do, our God promises that everything else is going to fall into place. And you know, in the case of Mary and Martha, they really needed this spiritual meal from Jesus that He served them that day because... It needed to get them through some very trying times that were coming in the next few months of their lives. In the next few months of their lives, they would see the sickness and death and raising of their brother Lazarus and then also the angry threats on his life from Jewish religious leaders that followed. But that wasn't everything. In those next few months of their lives, they would see their Savior Jesus arrested betrayed, crucified. And that could have shaken them to their very core. But by that time, they had been filled and fulfilled by that one thing needful. 
And that made their faith absolutely unshakable. They had every confidence that no grave could ever hold their Savior down. And they knew that one day they would see Him again in heaven. And brothers and sisters, that is a feast for the ages. A truth, a confidence, an assurance that our Lord Jesus still serves for us today. And it is one that He wants us to have often. And that's because there is nothing more needful for us than being fed with God's gospel message right here in God's house. Our hearts, yes, they rightly yearn to glorify God in our lives, just like Martha. But maybe the greatest way that we can give glory to our God is by gladly hearing and learning His Word, just like Mary did. Yes, what a feast it was that day in the home of Mary and Martha, and what a feast it is every day that we gather here in God's house as well. Our Lord Jesus, He has prepared for us a feast for the ages that has been satisfying God's people in this world for thousands of years, and it will surely sustain us until that day when He calls us to take our place at God's heavenly banquet feast of the Lamb in heaven one day. God grant it for Jesus' sake. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's continue our service then by confessing our common Christian faith using the Apostles' Creed. You can find that printed on the bottom of page 9 in your service folder. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Let's continue our service then by bringing our thank offerings to our Lord. I'd ask that while the offering is being collected, please sign the friendship registers that are located at the ends of your pews. Then rip out the sheets and put them on top of the booklets when you're done. Thank you. Please stand. Let's continue our service then with the responsive prayer of the church that begins on page 10 in your service folder. Lord God, our maker and preserver, we praise and thank you for all that you give us day after day. We are not worthy of all the mercies you show us. You have given us your precious word to nourish our souls and to protect us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. 
We thank you for those who teach and preach your saving truth at this place and everywhere. Grant them a rich measure of patience, wisdom, and love. Heavenly Father, we pray that you shield us from every kind of danger, sudden catastrophe, terrors of crime, and the pain of disease. Watch over those who travel by land, sea, and air. Keep our loved ones from whatever perils may threaten them. Heal those who are sick. Cheer those who are sad. Calm those who are distressed and comfort all who are old and infirm. Bless our land, our people, and those who hold offices of high trust. Keep our government and schools upright and strong for the advancement of good citizenship and useful vocations, that we may enjoy your gifts of peace, security, and well-being. Grant your blessing to every nation on earth. Where there are wars, may there be peace. Where there is hatred, let it be healed. Where there is poverty, danger, or disaster, come with your almighty power to help and restore. Lord God, your spirit of wisdom fills the earth and teaches us your ways. Look with favor on the students and staff of our Nebraska Evangelical Lutheran High School who are beginning classes this week, as well as on all those who are beginning their new school years. Let them rejoice in learning and take delight in new discoveries. Help them persevere in their studies and give them the desire to learn all things well. Look with favor on their teachers. Let them strive to share their knowledge with gentle patience and endeavor always to bring the truth to eager minds. Grant that students and teachers alike may follow Jesus Christ the way, the truth, and the life now and forever. Lord, we also ask you to be with the family and friends of Dick Kester, who went home to heaven to be with you on Tuesday. We thank you for giving him such a long, full life of opportunities to serve and glorify you. And we thank you for fulfilling his hopes by now bringing him to the eternal joys of heaven. Be now with those of us who grieve here on earth. Give us hope too, so that we can be confident that one day we will see our loved one again and together behold you face to face. And hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. We bring these requests before you in the name of Jesus, our Lord, and ask you to hear us. Take all that we have, our bodies and minds, our time and skills, our ministries and offerings, and use them to your glory. We give ourselves to you that we may serve you in whatever way is pleasing in your sight. Amen. And we join in the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Let's continue then with our next hymn. It's hymn number 462, O oh, That the Lord Would Guide My Ways.
Please stand for the closing prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for teaching us the things you want us to believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit to keep your word in pure hearts, that we may be strengthened in faith, guided in holiness, and comforted in life and in death. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated for the closing hymn. It's hymn number 283, Speak, O Savior, I Am Listening.